When North Korea threatened to test a new missile, American President-elect Donald Trump vowed to stop the North from developing a nuclear weapon capable of hitting the United States. But six weeks later, when North Korea did test a missile, now President Trump reacted with restraint. Speaking with the Prime Minister of Japan, Mr. Trump read a statement of just 23 words, pledging American support for Tokyo without even mentioning North Korea. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council announced an emergency meeting to discuss North Korea's recent launch of a nuclear-capable ballistic missile. The United States, Japan and South Korea had asked for the meeting on an urgent basis. North Korea launched the missile near the western city of Kusong and it flew east about 500 kilometers before falling into the Sea of Japan, according to South Korea's Defense Ministry. North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency confirmed the successful test of a surface-to-surface -surface medium long-range ballistic missile. The political turmoil in South Korea, where the president has been impeached, and the planned US-South Korean missile shield, which upsets China that sees it as a threat to its security, has caused North Korea to claim events have pushed the peninsula to the brink of a nuclear war. Many experts think North Korea is not yet able to put a nuclear warhead on its missiles, which would make it a global threat. But US commanders say they need to be prepared for the possibility, and there have been international calls for North Korea to be forced to abandon its nuclear ambitions, even though it claims this is to protect the country from US aggression. How do South Koreans feel about Trump's election to president? And will Korea ever be reunited? Simple questions with important answers. Considering so many Koreans in the past have been killed by the United States and Japan, we asked the public in South Korea if North Korea has a right to conduct these missile tests to show it is willing to protect itself. Or are such tests unhelpful to all Koreans? I don't think North Korea's weapon development benefits North Korea. Continuing to develop missiles is its way of showing to other countries that it will protect itself against potential attacks. And I think North Korea is making enemies by doing so. In the long term, North Korea's development of nuclear weapons harms peace of the Korean Peninsula and the world. But at the same time, I think it's wrong for South Korea to interfere with North Korea's claim to its own right. In the short term, North Korea may think that nuclear development may help, but in long term, economic sanctions and political pressure on North Korea are sure to be strengthened, so I think it does more harm. North Korea has no right to conduct weapon experiments. The country may use its own measures to protect its political system, but the ends cannot justify the means. Of course North Korea has no right to do so. I think North Korea's development of nuclear weapon will do more harm to North Korea. Korea is divided into two and surrounded by the US, China and Japan. China is a powerful state like the US and will not like North Korea's attainment of nuclear weapon, despite the fact that North Korea is a communist country. Well, developing nuclear weapons is uh, every country's prerogative, but it is uh, only uh, in principle uh, rights allowed to each and every sovereign country. But you have to think whether possession of nuclear weapons is the best way to ensure sovereignty, independence, and respect from the rest of the international community. In that regard, North Korea pursuing nuclear weapons and intercontinental missiles only undermines its uh, uh, chance to be respected and accepted in international society as a sovereign country. Think about it, um, without nuclear weapons, Japan has emerged as uh, one of the most influential powers in the world. And what about South Korea? South Korea briefly pursued nuclear weapons, but the attempts only backfired. And South Korea is a source of national strength and the uh, uh, protection of in its independence as a sovereign country do, do not necessarily come with the possession of nuclear weapons. South Korea's soft power and its uh, economic influence are far more uh, stronger and uh, uh, certain assurance of its uh, national security and sovereignty. 
So it is very uh, regretful that North Korea has not learned the right lessons from history and cases of other countries. North Korea argues that its development of nuclear weapon is an inevitable choice forced by the U.S. antagonistic policies. It is true that such antagonistic, hardline policies on North Korea exists in the U.S., and North Korea's arguments are understandable to some degree. But I don't agree that it's a good choice for North Korea and the entire East Asia. U.S. has a new administration, South Korea will soon have a presidential election, and China China and Russia are strongly calling for stability and denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So even if North Korea has chosen to develop nuclear weapons so far, it should now adapt to the changing environment and condition and be more cooperative in the denuclearization. It needs a change of direction from depending on nuke for prosperity and safety towards pursuing reinforcement of security and development of economy through denuclearization and improving the level of ordinary people's lives. Does the election of Donald Trump worry Koreans? And why? We ask them. I am deeply worried. He is very unpredictable, and Americans are discussing impeachment and holding fierce demonstrations. If the people of the country can't trust their own president, Koreans too can't help but be anxious, considering the special relationship between the two countries. Since the US is in a close relationship with Korea and has a lot of interactions with Korea, I am worried that there will be some influence on Korea. I can't help but be worried. He has committed human rights violations and sexual discrimination. And he is an unexpected president. I didn't think he would be elected. He doesn't have any serious problems at all yet, but I'm worried about what will happen from now on. I'm a little concerned because Korea as a country depends a lot on the US, and the relationship between the two countries is very important. But in the US, a very predictable person is in the White House now, and the domestic political situation of Korea is in chaos. So overall, this is a worrying situation. I think restrictions on Korean companies like Samsung will negatively impact the Korean economy. This year's growth rate is reported to be stagnated, and Trump's influence is likely to exacerbate that trend. Um, what I'm interested in comparing the beginning of the Bush administration in 2003, I'm sorry, 2001, uh, and the beginning of the Donald Trump administration. There is a striking similarity in terms of prioritizing America's national interest. But what Donald Trump administration hopefully uh, is going to learn is that unilateral pursuit of America's national interest does not really work. In the name of fighting global terrorism after 9-11 in 2001, Bush administration and basically divide the entire world into two camps. One, unconditionally supporting Bush administration's unilateral policy to fight global terrorism, including war in Iraq, and the other camp that emphasizes more engagement policy or multilateralism. And you have your own assessment how that exercise of unilateral policy by Bush administration worked. And the Trump administration has a very rich material to look back and learn good lessons, not to repeat the same mistake, but also make huge improvement upon um, its policy designed to pursue America's national interest. Trump is like a rugby ball, and there are plenty of problems in his administration as well. Some even suggest that Trump will not be able to finish his term and be impeached. So I'm worried about Trump's administration. On the other hand, however, Trump administration is critical about U.S. traditional diplomatic policies, and Trump has said multiple times during his campaign that he was willing to meet Kim Jong-un in person. So at the time as I'm worried about Trump's inauguration as a Korean, 
I also suspect that it may be a chance to make a change in the stagnant and ever worsening problems of the Korean Peninsula, depending on how South Korea handles them. Trump administration argues that the strategic patience policy that Obama administration adopted failed to solve the North Korea issue and that a different approach is needed. The different approach, some suggest, can be stronger sanctions and even a regime change and preventive strike. But I think he will soon realize those aren't realistic options. I think Trump administration is willing to have direct conversation with North Korea and with the inauguration of the South Korea administration. I am hopeful that the inter-Korean dialogue, suspended for the past 10 years, may resume. We will need to put efforts into leading the matters towards that direction. Do people in South Korea feel that Korea will be reunified? And what is stopping that from happening? I definitely think that Korea will be reunified someday. The biggest current obstacles will be North Korea's political ideology and nuclear development. I think Korea must be reunified, and I think it will be, although we will need some time. I can't name any one obstructing factor, but all of the current administration's policies for unification are an obstacle. I think reunification will come someday, but I can't give any estimate like 10 or 20 years. Both South and North Korea have a lot to fix now. More time should pass before we know what to expect. In the long term, I think Korea will be unified because North Korea's leadership is steadily losing stability. But the main obstacle would be the countries that have a stake in East Asia, such as China and the US. It's in the interest of various countries to delay the reunification. Without elimination of sources of the threat to global security and neighboring countries, including South Korea, Japan, even China, then uh, both Koreas cannot guarantee international support for two Koreas being unified. The lesson of Germany, Germany's uh, unification in, at the uh, end of the uh, Cold War was that German unification was only possible because uh, West Germany uh, secured international support for German unification, including the Soviet Union's endorsement. But as long as North Korea possesses nuclear weapons and continuously threatening the neighboring country's basic security, then there will be enough international support in favor of the two Koreas merging. The current inter-Korean relationship is the worst in history, so to discuss reunification feels out of accordance with the current situation. What matters more than reunification as a result is reunification as a process and what future vision we may have after reunification. Reunification is a very difficult matter. The two Koreas have long lived in disparate systems and we must consider relationships with neighboring countries and the sense of difference and antagonism that exists between the people of the two Koreas. What matters at this point is to ensure that the future generation can think about and make actions for reunification in a better environment and conditions. It's important to make that environment. If complete reunification is a hundred, having Gaiseon complex, MT Gyeongkang tourism, and a rather active inter-Korean communication and cooperation may have been a thirty. If two or three additional joint industrial complex are built and South and North Koreans can freely communicate, then there will be a 50. If the long-standing armistice is replaced with a peace treaty and the nuke issue is solved, that can make a 60 or a 70. It's important to keep in mind reunification as a process, not as a result. And what the current generation can and should do is to enable the future generation to think about and make actions for reunification in a better environment and conditions. The issue at the heart of the rising tensions is uncertainty. Trump's muted comments after the missile test contrasted sharply with his response after Iran tested a ballistic missile when America introduced sanctions and officially put Iran on notice. If North Korea was testing the new president, Mr. Trump seemed eager to show he wouldn't be provoked. Instead, he attacked Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, instead of the Maverick North Korean leader. 
It's worth noting that 10 million civilians in Seoul are in artillery range of a North Korean response. Donald Trump has encouraged Japan to get nuclear weapons. Does the South Korean public think a nuclear-armed Japan would be a threat to North and South Korea, and why? Speaking as a student, I don't think Japan and Korea have ever been in a good relationship. So nuclear-armed Japan will increase our burden of risk. Japan and Korea have ill sentiments towards each other because of their history. It's an antagonistic relationship. So admittedly, Korea will feel more secure and I would be doubtful the diplomatic relationship between the two countries can ever be good. I would be scared. Having nuclear weapons makes a big difference. The level of quality of weapons Korea has will be far below Japan's. The weapon will function as a deterrent force in the world of today, in which every nation keeps all the other nations in check. But I don't think we need to be too scared of nuclear-armed Japan. Japan is more likely to attack the US or China than to attack Korea. Korea is the country that's always stuck in the middle. We must be cautious of Japan, stabbing us in the back. A friendly relationship between the two countries may help Korea, but there is no permanent friend or enemy. So personally, I wish Japan to not have nuclear weapons. I also don't think it's right for the US to condone Japan's nuclear armament. So it is premature for us to just say that Donald Trump has uh, you know, decided to allow Japan to develop its own nuclear weapons and uh, Japan is ready to uh, take it to develop its own nuclear weapons. You have to also take into account the deep-seated aversion among Japanese citizens to nuclear armament. Japan is the only country in human history that uh, was hit by two atomic bombs at the end of the Pacific War. So so-called nuclear allergy is still extremely strong among Japan's population. And what about uh, Japan possibly you know, arming herself with nuclear weapons? Some people would be afraid that they would create kind of a domino effect uh, to other countries in East Asia, including South Korea, to make decisions to arm herself uh, as well with nuclear weapons. Since South Korea will be the only country without nuclear weapons after China, North Korea, and Japan um, acquire nuclear weapons. But at the same time, you have to also consider that South Korea possessing its own nuclear weapons cannot be compatible with continuous prov provision of nuclear deterrence by the United States. So South Korea will face a very tough decision whether uh, it will pursue its own nuclear deterrence with its own nuclear weapons or it will continue to rely on U.S. nuclear umbrella that has been extremely effective for the past 70 years. I think the possibility of that scenario is very low, almost zero. Trump's intention behind the remark is that he may withdraw U.S. forces in Korea and Japan if the two countries don't contribute more to their security and increase their defense expenditure, and that South Korea and Japan will then be at their own will if they want to arm themselves with nuclear power. I don't think that remark needs to be taken seriously. Japan must have grasped the real intention as well. It is well aware that nuclear armament on the premise of destruction of the alliance will pose a total threat to security, economy and national interest. So the possibility of a nuclear-armed Japan is near zero. And thus the influence of a nuclear-armed Japan on South Korea is not something we should worry about. Kim Jong-un's older brother was recently assassinated in Malaysia. Some believe the assassination was carried out by the North Koreans. What are the South Korean public's thoughts on this? Only those behind the murder will know the exact truth. But historically, many kings have assumed that when they take the throne, their siblings cannot be trusted or share the power. So I'm guessing that he was assassinated. So much unclear news is pouring out right now. I can't trust them. It is a very anxious time and I can't completely trust the news.
Since Pyongyang has committed many senseless actions to maintain and consolidate its power, I think North Korea was behind the assassination of Kim Jong Nam. It hasn't been long since the death, so I'm yet to have any personal opinion. But according to the news, there is a possibility of posthumous execution once Kim Jong Nam's body is brought back to North Korea. I don't know what to think about the death yet. I don't know what kind of person Kim Jong Nam was and what opinions he had, so I can't properly answer this one. I've only seen some news about the death, but those kinds of cruelties have happened in North Korea before, and even though North Korea denies responsibility, no other country is likely to have carried out an assassination considering their interests. That's my thought after having watched the news. Um, there has not been smoking gun evidence about who actually committed the assassination and what kind of method uh, were used, but it seems like there are a lot of fingerprints of Kim Jong-un uh, for this assassination. What does it mean uh, to North Korea's future and the North Korea's pursuit of nuclear weapons and ICBMs and inter-Korean cooperation? I think this proves that Kim Jong-un is free from any restraints. He is literally and practically the absolute leader in North Korea. North Korea is Kim Jong-un's own country. It was reported that Kim Jong-il, his father, in his dying bed, uh, actually asked Kim Jong-un, the heir apparent, not to kill his half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, once he uh, seized the power. But the fact that he ignored his father's dying injunction means that even psychologically, he is he is free from any restraint. He is a leader who is ready to do anything and everything that he can and he wishes. It's an absurd and terrible event. The news definitely was shocking. If the murder was indeed committed by Pyongyang, the country's devilish image in the international community will be even more emphasized and it may become an obstacle in Trump administration or the next South Korean administration negotiation and cooperation with North Korea. However, there are also many things beyond comprehension. They are unable to conclude whether North Korea was behind the murder or whether Kim Jong-un gave the order until we have the facts straight. Also, North Korea's involvement does not directly signify Kim Jong-un's involvement. So I think it's better to wait until the facts are investigated and then express my opinion. This kind of happening may give a boost to those who try to justify hardline policies towards North Korea. We will need to react wisely and keep to such opinion from negatively impacting the political situation of the peninsula or inter-Korean relationship. The US has military forces in South Korea and is planning to deploy an advanced missile system there in response to perceived threats from the north. The US also occasionally deploys nuclear-powered and armed warships and aircraft capable of carrying atomic weapons in the region. So North Korea says it successfully completed the launch of a new ballistic missile, showing the world it will defend itself against US hostility and it also means the stage is set for a standoff. Is this wordplay or power play? And can it lead to a nuclear war? The problem is, right now, nobody really knows.